back for another fun project. Today we're going to be working on this prism triangle crochet cow. This is done in a different way than I've done cows before. I really like this triangle to it. It means I have less bulk in the back and more in the front, which is really, really nice when you're like throwing on a coat or a jacket that you might leave open. And I really, really enjoy this shape. So this is really, really fun to make. I left quite a bit of space in the neck so you can kind of shape it how you want. However, it works for you with cold weather. You can also take this cow and you can kind of pull it if you desire a little bit over your shoulders. You can always tuck in this top here if you don't like it to be quite as full. And then you can see that beautiful color work. So let's talk about the construction and the supplies for this beautiful cow. So this cow will be worked from the top down starting in rows. So we work in rows until we get to the point that we join and then we will work in rounds to do this beautiful color work. These top stitches are done in a regular single crochet stitch and these bottom stitches we switch and we start working in a split single crochet also known as the moss stitch. So if you want to see the back here you'll notice how this part this section here was worked in rows and then we joined and we did this color work. I'm also going to note that there's not really a seam. The reason why is we work this color work continuous. You can kind of see we have a little bit of color jogging here. However, I'm more comfortable with the color jog versus the seam, which is usually quite noticeable and stuff like this, but it's nice. And while I've got this flipped over, you can see what happens when we do color work on the wrong side. So this is like a fair aisle style color work and crochet, and I'm carrying the yarn across as we go. We're working two strands at the same at, at once, and then we carry the yarn that we're not working on the back. Now, I know some people like to crochet over that yarn, and I do that all the time. However, when it comes to this style of color work, just to get that beautiful drape, I find that carrying the yarn on the back versus crocheting over it when you don't need it to be reversible, which we do not need this to be reversible, creates a better drape. So that's what I recommend for this. So it's really a quite fun project if you're comfortable with color work. If you're not, head over to my blog and I have some other patterns and a few freebies on there to try out before getting into something like this. This is a bit intermediate of color work, but also I just want to stay. I was always the type of crocheter that jumped right in and I always did just fine. So if you want to give it a try, feel free. If it doesn't work out for you the first time, learn a few more techniques and don't be, ever be afraid to come back. Now we're going to talk about the supplies. So for this first cowl, I used the Mary Maxim Prism in the autumn mist color. And then for the solid color, I used the Ultra Mellow Spun DK, and this was in the beige color. But for the one I'm going to be doing on camera, I thought it would be fun to make a second one a different color. So I am going to be using this rainbow. Isn't that beautiful? And yes, I saw this and put on these nails to match for this video because it's so awesome. And then I will be using this color of the Mellow Spun, which is a dark gray. I really think this is going to help the colors pop. There's some wonderful people over at Mary Maxim and one of them helped me actually choose these colors and she had done something with it once and I love the look. So I'm thinking this is going to turn out great. The other supplies that we need are a G hook. This one is from Furls Crochet. This is their streamline set, their streamline swirl. Each one is a little bit different, so they're unique when you order yours. Um, you'll need a tapestry needle for weaving in the ends. I like to have these needle holders, that way I don't lose my needle on the couch. It's just a nice accessory to pick up from Furls Crochet as well. You'll need a pair of scissors, and then I highly recommend three stitch markers. So when it comes to these stitch markers, I like to use one on each end, and then one for the center increasing stitch. The reason why is in this pattern, we are not going to be using a chain one on each side, and you'll see why in a moment. So this is what we need to get started. So let's go ahead and jump right in with row one. So in the pattern, I have labeled the colors as color A and color B. Color A will be your solid color and color B will kind of be your more color variant. However, you can do it in two different solid colors. This is more your background color. I've also included a chart if you're comfortable working from a chart when it comes to the increasing section. It's a little bit different because it has some increases. So we have some no stitch areas, but I really am a visual person myself. 
but it also includes the written instructions, so be sure to pick up that as well. To get started, we're going to start with our color A, and we are going to create a magic circle. Now, if this is your first time doing a magic circle, I have a video that will show it a bit slower, but basically I'm going to fold it like this, and then I bring this one over and around, and I insert my hook through this loop. And this is where I like to do just one slip stitch to get it started. Now we are going to be crocheting three single crochets into this magic circle. And now I'm going to pull my tail end and tighten that down. And we aren't joining. I know I'm saying circle, which usually indicates we're working the round, but we're not. We're actually just going to tighten this for our first edge and then we are done with row one. So now we are going to turn and single crochet into two stitches into that very first stitch. Now this is where you'll notice I am not going to chain one on the edge. I find it's just unnecessary and adds a lot of bulk. So I just go right into that first stitch and I single crochet two stitches into that first stitch. Now here's where I like to use my stitch markers. I like to mark that first stitch, especially where I'm not chaining on the sides, and that way I know what the last stitch of my row will be on my next row. And now for the center stitch, I will single crochet three. So we are going to have a center stitch for every single row or round in this pattern, all the way from the first row to the last round. So after I single crochet three, kind of got bit excited there and finish that stitch early. After we single crochet three, we are going to take our center stitch marker. I like to use a different color and I'm going to mark the center stitch of these three stitches. And that will always be the stitch I mark. So when we do the next round row, we will be moving it up and marking the center stitch of those three stitches. And then in the last stitch of this row, I am going to single crochet two. And that is the end of row two. I will turn and for row three, I am going to single crochet two into the very first stitch and I'm going to mark the first stitch in the row. And now row three will be a repeat row later on because they'll work, work out very similarly. Now I'm going to single crochet until that center stitch. So for this row, it's just two single crochets. And now that I'm back at my center stitch, I can remove that stitch marker and I'm going to do three single crochets into the center stitch. And now I'm going to mark that center stitch again. Once you get going, you may not need your markers. You might just be able to like notice the center stitch of these on each row, but at, when you're getting started, I always like the safety net of markers. And now I'm going to single crochet until the last stitch, which is two single crochets. And now I'm on my last stitch that I've marked. I'm going to take out that marker and two single crochet into the last. And that is the end of row three. Now rows four through six are simply a repeat of row three. We will turn and two single crochet into the first stitch and then mark our first stitch of this row. Single crochet until you get to the center stitch marker. And now in that center stitch, we will do three single crochets into that center stitch and mark our center stitch again. And now we're going to single crochet until the last stitch. And now in our last stitch, we are going to do two single crochets into the last. And we will repeat that for rows four and five as well. I'll do those off camera. But I just want to note that every single time we do an in, uh, a row right now, it is increasing by four stitches. 
So at the end of row six, when I come on back, you'll have 23 stitches. And now for row seven, I'm going to be bringing in my color B or this beautiful rainbow. So for row seven, all we're doing is switching colors, but we are still going to be doing a repeat of row three. So I'm going to start by doing this very first stitch. And actually, I wanna show you a trick when you're changing colors. So on the last stitch of this row, I'm gonna back up one step. So one step in my single crochet. I have two loops on the hook and it's time for me to yarn over and pull through both those loops to complete that single crochet. But if I yarn over with my new color and pull through, now I've completed that stitch and I'm ready to start the next row with my new color. So I'm going to do two single crochets into the first stitch. And now I'm going to mark the first stitch of this row. And single crochet to the center marker. And now at the center marker, I will do three single crochets. And then place that marker back into the center of those stitches. And single crochet to the last stitch and then do two single crochets into the last. Now at the end of row seven, you can go ahead and fasten off this color because we're going to be switching back to color A, which I need to also fasten off color A from before. And now I'm going to finish my last stitch in the row with my color A. And now I'm ready to work row eight. So I'm gonna turn. Now for row eight, we are going to be working into the um, third loop. So the third loop is actually on the side facing us because we have the wrong side of our work facing us and we see this third loop on the back side of our previous row. So the third loop, if you're look, doing a crochet stitch, this would be the right side of our work. If you kind of turn it, you'll see that there is a horizontal bar on the back. So when we turn our work and we're working on the wrong side of our work, the horizontal bar is facing us we're going to be going through this horizontal bar only for this row. What it does is it leaves almost a knit look row where our stitches are, uh, the top of our stitches are showing. It's just a nice little detail. If you don't wanna do it this way, that's fine. You can simply single crochet this row. So working in the third root loop, the very first stitch is always the hardest to understand where that third loop is, but it's actually this slanted loop here. So I'm gonna start by grabbing that and I'm going to single crochet two into that third loop. And then I'm going to mark my first stitch of the row. And I'm going to continue working in the same style as row three for this row, but we're just, um, working in that third loop is the only difference. So I'm going to single crochet until I get to that center marker. And sometimes it takes me a little bit longer on these rows just because it's just grabbing that one strand, but I find it's worth it for that little detail. So go ahead and complete this row by like repeating what we did before. We're gonna to work to the center stitch, do three, and then work to the end and do two stitches in the last but just work that into the third loop. So rows nine through 12 are simply a repeat of row three. So you can see where we're at and nine through 12 just repeat. And then we're going to be doing the repeat of rows seven through 12 for four more times. And then we will do rows seven through eight one more time. And that will give us the repeats that create this top part. Now this is still all done in rows and it's just a lot of repeating. So continue to do this section in rows. And then when we come back, we will join and start doing the color work. So I'm going to go work on this off camera so that I can get those repeats done. And then we can start into this color work. Welcome back. It's a new day for me. And last night I finished the first part of this cow. So we're going to go ahead and talk about that. Okay, so now it's time to stop working in rows and to start working in rounds. 
So if you look at this count, this row right here, the last row in beige is what we just worked on this one in the dark gray. So now it's time to work our first row of color work. Now for round one, when we're joining and doing the round, we start our first stitch in the second color. So before I join, and I know I need to be switching to this color, I am going to go ahead and switch to this color of my last stitch of the last row. That way I'm ready to work in the round in the color that I need to start with. Notice that I have taken out my stitch markers on each side. I still want my stitch marker for that V point so that I know where I want to increase at that center increase. So we will stop increasing on each side, but we are going to continue to increase at our V. To join these edges together, we're going to, I still have my wrong side facing at this point. I am going to fold in my cowl and I'm going to join with my new color to the first stitch on the opposite corner. So it might feel a little bit, you might have to like really make a look, take a look at this and make sure you're joining in the right part. These are the edges, these are our stitches. So I'm going to join with the wrong side facing and then I'm going to turn my work. This will be the last time we have to turn our work because when we keep going, we're going to work continuously in the round. So even though I've joined with a slip stitch here, this is the only time we're going to do any joining in the round. The rest of this will be worked continuously. We will not be using any more slip stitches. We'll just keep working around and around and around. So now we're ready to work our first stitch in the round, which I've already mentioned. I know that my very first stitch in the round will be in this color B. So I'm going to go ahead and do that stitch. Now I will say you can work this from the written pattern, which is written out row by row and how many stitches you'll do in each color, or you can work from a chart. So we're going to take a look at that chart really quick. So on this chart, the green squares are the color B and the gray squares are the background color, color A. Every single time we do a round, we will start from the right hand side working to the left hand side. So you'll do round one working from right to left and then for round two you come back working from right to left. You will not join, we're just going to like go straight from round one right into round two. This chart we'll also notice here that we've got some empty spaces. The reason why is this area where it's just empty squares is are no stitches. This is an increasing chart, so we'll have some no stitch space so that I could fit all the stitches onto this chart. You'll also notice this center line. This is an increase by three. So this is our center V point where every single time we come to the center, we are going to do three, three split single crochets as we get going here into that center stitch. Let's go back to looking at the cowl now, and we know from so I've already worked my first stitch knowing that I was going to be working in color B. I'm going to mark my first stitch. This I feel like is essential when we're working in the round and not joining. That way you know when you've gotten to the end of the round and you can make sure that all your stitches are adding up. So we are going to single crochet the first nine stitches of the round, but I want to note here that you still have a secondary color to contend with here. We don't want to carry our secondary color or whatever color we're not using at the time for more than three stitches. The reason why is because that would be a really, really big long float. If I were to single crochet nine stitches and then pull this color across, it would be a really long float which could mess up the tension of this cowl and also our fingers or whatever could catch on it as we were putting it on. So I've caught my yarn here. I want you to see what that looks like. And I'm going to do that again. So I will single crochet a few stitches and then when I'm ready, I will simply take the color that I'm not using that I just want to float on the back 
and I'm going to lay it over my hook and I'm just going to let it sit there. Then I'm going to take the color I'm working with and I'm going to be working over that, that floating color and I will complete my stitch. And if you notice, now it caught it on the back and the float isn't that long. You can see it a lot better on this side where each one of these floats, they're not carrying, you know, nine stitches or 14 stitches. They are caught by working it that way. Every so often you kind of catch your yarn so that we don't have these really long strands and it looks much cleaner on the back side. So whenever you're working more than three stitches, it's important to go ahead and catch that yarn on the back side. Now when I'm ready to switch colors again, which one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I am going to still use that method of yarning over and finishing the previous stitch. And now I'm ready to work with my new color. So for this round, we are working in single crochet. And then for the next round, we will be working in the split single crochet, which is the moss stitch. So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to finish this round. And remember, every single time we get to this center marker, this will be an increase by three. And we are always going to be using the color B. So our, our rainbowish color will be the, the color that we are using here to increase by three on every single round. So that's our only increased stitch. Now every round will increase by two stitches instead of four. So we're going to come on back. I'm not really going to be working from the chart too much. I just want to work this round and then come back and show you how to work into these stitches by using that split single crochet. So I have jumped to round five, just so you can see where we are headed. I think it's easier for me to demonstrate these split single crochets when you can already see some, so you know what we're working with. So our very first stitch in this row will be in our gray. So I'm going to uh, take out my stitch marker and work this very first stitch. Now I'm just going to get this one in there and then we'll talk about that split single crochet. I'm going to mark that first stitch. I actually change colors here. So before I finish the stitch, I'll yarn over with my new color and now I'm ready for the next stitch. So when it comes to doing split single crochets, we're not working in this section right here. We're actually working in the front V section right in the middle. So if I were to work right here, this is how we work a normal single crochet. But what I want to do is go right in the center of the front V. So we're kind of splitting that stitch. And when I do so, and I come out the back, there's actually a V on the back that you're that's upside down V that you're also going through. Now, the most critical part of this stitch is this loop right here. This loop needs to extend further up than you would with a normal single crochet. The reason being is it's starting a bit lower. Plus we need to be able to get in between this the next time we come around. So if you're finding that this is a difficult stitch to work, most likely this is the culprit. This should work just as easy as doing a single crochet. Then I'll yarn over with my new color and pull through and notice that nice V on the front. That's what we're looking for. It's going into the one below. And when we come back around again for our next round, we will work in the center of that V. So all these stitches from here on out will be worked in a split single crochet. So my next two stitches are as well. So I'll go in between here and out the back, pull up, pull up a little bit more. If your hands are cramping to do this stitch, once again, you're probably not pulling up this loop. So you really want to pull up that loop quite a bit before you uh, move on to the next stitch. You'll get comfortable with it the more you practice it. This does take a little bit of practice to get completely comfortable with it, but it really does work as simple as a single crochet as long as you're lifting up that loop so that when you come around again, it's easy to get into that V. And then you'll just continue working in the uh, pattern, like on the chart or the written pattern. And it's really quite simple. Sometimes if I yarn up too much, I'll kind of pull down a little bit to fix that stitch, especially when I'm switching to a new color. You can work this in plain single crochets or in the back loop only where it's not a fitted item. It'll change the gates just slightly, but it's really not that big of a deal. If you don't like working in split single crochets, 
You can always do it in regular single crochet or single crochet into that back loop only. So this is what that split stitch looks like. It looks like a knit stitch. I'm still carrying my yarn on the back so it doesn't get too bulky. And then from here on out, you're just working the pattern till the end. And the very last row, I just do one final row of this rainbow color and then your pattern is done. So as you notice here, I just did one final row just to kind of finish it out and that's it. So we're just working that color work around. And I also just want to note with this, this center, we're still increasing in the center. And when you do so, you are increasing in the split single crochet way. So I've got my center stitch marked, but I will go into that V. Now these can be a bit hard to find where they're all squished together. So kind of pay attention to the back of the work and make sure you're going in between the upside down V. If this is kind of hard on the center, you can work these center three as single crochets and work the rest as split single as regular or split single crochet. So these can be worked as regular single crochets and the rest as a split single crochet. But that is it. Those are all the main parts to complete this pattern. Luna and I both hope you enjoy this color work project. She's getting quite nippy, so I think I'll take her outside to play. But be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back for more fun color work projects soon. I'm sure this will be my very like, last triangle color work because this one came out so well. I absolutely love it. Luna loves it. And be sure to uh, do a hashtag Brianna K Designs so that I can find your work too. I love seeing what you make. It really, really excites me every single time I see your project. So until next time, Luna and I will see you soon.